Hello students! Welcome back to our science video. After learning the concepts about fundamental law of inheritance by Gregor Mendel, such as law of dominance, law of segregation, and law of independent assortment, we are now moving on with our next lesson, and it's about the monohybrid cross. But before we define monohybrid cross, let's talk about first what is a test cross. A test cross is performed to determine the genotype of an individual with a trait that is dominant. The concerned individual is crossed to one with a trait that is recessive. Let us use the picture to understand further what is a test cross. Based on the picture, a dominant phenotype, which is a purple flower, is crossed with a recessive phenotype, which is a white flower. A purple flower can have two different genotypes. It can be a homozygous dominant or a heterozygous dominant. In this example, there can be two possible test cross. A cross between a homozygous dominant purple flower with a homozygous recessive white flower. And a cross between a heterozygous purple flower with a homozygous recessive white flower. Based on the result of the first test cross, the possible genotypes of the offspring are all heterozygous purple, while on the second test cross, the result is half of the offspring are heterozygous purple, while the other half is homozygous recessive white. The given example is a type of monohybrid cross, since there is only one trait that is crossed, which is the color of the flower. A monohybrid cross is a cross between two organisms with different variations at one genetic chromosome of interest. And based on the example, it is the flower color. In order for us to easily solve a monohybrid cross problem, we are using a box that organizes the genotypes of the parents that will be crossed, just like what we use in our example. In a test cross, the results are shown in a box known as the Panet square. It was devised by geneticist Reginald Panet. This organizes the genotypes of the individuals to be crossed. Based on the picture, parent 1 and parent 2 are both heterozygous tall. If we cross two heterozygous dominant, the result will be one homozygous dominant tall, two heterozygous dominant tall, and one homozygous recessive short. Again, this example is another type of a monohybrid cross since the only trait of interest is the height of the plant. The Ponnet square helps us to easily organize and identify the genotypes of the offspring, but still, we need to learn more on the steps in solving a monohybrid cross problem. In solving monohybrid cross problem, there are seven steps that we need to follow. First, we need to identify the trait. Second, identify the dominant form of the trait. Third, assign a letter for the allele. Fourth, determine the genotype of the parents. Fifth, set up the Ponnet square. Sixth, determine the genotypic ratios of the offspring. And lastly, determine the phenotypic ratios of the offspring. To apply the steps in solving monohybrid cross problem, let's try to answer a sample problem. Let's apply the seven steps in solving a monohybrid cross problem using this sample problem. Tall plants are dominant to short plants in a tomato plant. Cross a homozygous tall plant to a heterozygous tall plant. Then let's try to answer the following problem. Determine the genotypic and phenotypic ratio and what is the probability that the offspring is a heterozygous tall plant. Based on the problem, we need to solve for the genotypic and phenotypic ratio and to determine also the probability that the offspring can have a heterozygous tall plant. The trait that we are crossing is the height of the plant, wherein tall is the dominant trait while short is the recessive trait. Let's use letter T to represent the alleles of our parents. For parent number 1, it is homozygous tall. For our parent number 2, we have heterozygous tall. After writing the genotypes of our parents, we can now draw our Ponnet square.
we can now have the genotypes of our parent along the side of our Punnett square. Parent number 1, parent number 2. And then write the genotypes of our offspring in each boxes. After accomplishing the Punnett square, we can now determine the genotypic ratio. For our genotypic ratio, what we need to do is just to look for the possible genotypes in the Punnett square. As you can see, there are only two possible genotypes, this and this. And then, let's count how many of this genotype number one we can see in our Punnett square. There are two. And for our genotype number two, there are also two. So our genotypic ratio is two is to two, or simply one is to one. We simplify 2 is to 2 into 1 is to 1 just to show that there are only two possible genotypes. This and this. And then for our phenotypic ratio, based on the idea of phenotypic ratio, phenotypes is the observable characteristics or traits of an organism. And based on our Punnett square, all of them are all tall. So we have 4 is to 0. 2 homozygous tall and 2 heterozygous tall. So all of them are tall, so 4 is to 0. And then going back to the second question, what is the probability that the offspring can have a heterozygous tall plant? So each box says you represent 25%. 25%, 25%, and another 25%. So if we add 25% with another 25%, we can have 50%. And that is the probability, the chance, or the percentage that we can have heterozygous tall plant. I hope that you learned something from our video for today. We will answer more problems about monohybrid cross during our next lesson. Thank you for listening and God bless.